put up a pretty big incline there. There's 60 plus. So I mean, um, MDX is not uh, slow at all. Welcome to Drive Culture. I'm Jonathan Rivers, and today we have the 2025 Acura MDX Type S. And I'm gonna tell you why all the updates they made might make this one of the best three row luxury SUVs on the market. So we'll go over the exterior, the interior, the powertrain, and of course, take it for a drive. So if this is content you're after, or you're new to the channel, please be sure to click that bell to subscribe to come back for more. And with that, let's get after it. All right, guys, here is the exterior of the 2025 Acura MDX Type S. Now, if you've joined our channel before, you know that we've already done a review on the 2024 Acura MDX A-Spec. So not only here are you getting to see the changes for 2025, but you're also getting to see the delta in performance from A-Spec to Type S. Now, also, you might have seen our reviews of other Type S models from Acura, like the TLX Type S and even the Integra Type S. So if you haven't watched those videos yet to learn what Type S is all about, be sure to watch and like those videos as well. But let's jump right into the styling changes and the overall design of this refreshed 2025 Acura MDX Type S. So let's talk about the color, right? Right off the bat, this is Urban Gray Pearl. So this first launch on the refresh of the TLX Type S. And again, we have a video of that car on the channel as well. Uh, just like the TLX Type S, it looks fantastic here on the MDX. But if we go straight up to the front, let's talk about what's new for 2025. So first and foremost, they made a lot of changes to this front grille and front fascia. So first, let's take a look at this little piece here that comes in front of the hood. This was actually redesigned for 2025. The reason is, is that there was a chrome grille that kind of went up into that piece. And on Type S and A-Spec, it was painted either black or body color. So there used to be a cut line there. Down below, they've completely removed the grille altogether on Type S, and it looks so much better. It looks so much cleaner, so much more premium. And if you look really close and you're a fan of the MDX, you'll notice that even for the Type S, this kind of open surface diamond pentagon grille, it was actually redesigned for 2025. So uh, they kind of restyled the diamonds themselves, kind of spread it out a little bit more. Uh, but again, I think that helps to make it a much, much cleaner design. And if we look at the lower front fascia, this is where really the big changes took place. So here they completely restyled the lower front fascia and kind of mimicked what Acura did with the Integra Type S by adding in these huge gloss black kind of like intakes. So that looks really good. It really helps to make MDX a lot more aggressive. Uh, and yes, actually there is some openings there, so it's functional as well. So that's a nice touch. Uh, in fact, almost all of the surfaces now in the front are open and functional due to the engine, which we'll cover in the powertrain section. So uh, let's talk about this though. So this is the Type S, and that means it's the fully loaded trim. The Acura calls it the Type S Advance. And the MSRP on this thing is $74,490. So, um, that's a lot of money, but when you hear all the technology and features and upgrades that they've made, uh, to get something with all this, like in a European competitor, you're easily going to pay into the mid 90,000s, if not six figures. So uh, we're going to talk about all those details. But um, if you think about the MDX lineup, right? So now the entry level, um, non, uh, you know, turbo engine, uh, front wheel drive that starts, you know, 3,900 is the pricing. So we'll put um, the pricing down below. So there's literally almost $25,000 uh, going from a base MDX all the way up to this Type S Advance. But uh, it's definitely warranted and we'll cover uh, what really makes up all those changes. So uh, let's start making our way around to the side of the vehicle. Um, one of the things at the front, um, this car does have the full 360 uh, camera system. We'll show you how that works. Um, it does have four parking sensors up front. LED fog lights. It also has Acura Chicane daytime running light and Jewel Eye LED headlights. Super bright at night, looks super premium when you drive past it. And again, if you look really closely, maybe you see it there, it says Acura at the top of the headlight as well. So um, let's go ahead 
And uh, before we jump into the, uh, the wheel and tire package, because that's a good one, let's, uh, let's just take a step back and look at the entire vehicle. So the overall silhouette of MDX didn't change. Again, this is a mid-cycle refresh, but it definitely has character. And it looks so good in this urban gray pearl with all the piano black accents that come with both the A-Spec and the Type S. So now let's go ahead and jump into this wheel and tire package. So um, these are some massive wheel and tires here. So these are 275 40R21s, right? So 21 inch wheels. Uh, they started, you know, uh, Berlina Black as Acura calls it. Then they're a uh, split kind of five spoke machine finish. Uh, also come with the black lug nuts, which is really nice. But uh, peeking behind there, you can see the huge, they're over 14 inches for the, uh, uh, the rotors. And you can actually see the calipers there. So it says Brembo and Acura. So you got four piston Brembo brakes up front painted in red. So really nice touch. And of course, we'll talk about how those stop during the drive. Um, what you may not be able to see behind it is the adaptive suspension and air suspension so again we'll talk about how it rides and how it changes uh once we get inside but you do have the type s badging uh that's also available in like a gloss black is like an accessory from the dealers you get the uh, black mirror caps with the led turn signals they're also power folding uh which is nice and they also have the cameras on the bottom for the 360. you get the black uh, roof rails at top and then that kind of black side blade down below uh, also, the uh, fenders and the lower cladding is also painted gloss black on Type S. So, uh, like I said, that against this paint looks really, really good. You get the same wheel and tire package in the rear. However, you do get smaller rotors and calipers, but the calipers are also painted red like the front. So, let's go ahead and make our way to the rear of the MDX Type S. And this is going to be my favorite view because I just love what they've done with the quad exhaust here, right? You know right away that it's not an A-Spec, it's not a base MDX, it's the Type S. Um, really, there were no changes for the uh, mid-cycle refresh to the rear because, like I said, it already looked really, really good. But let's just cover some things. Um, obviously, you got the Acura badge, you got the Type S badge down there off to the side. You got MDX as well as SH all-wheel drive. So we'll talk about that also during the powertrain section. And then you get kind of like an aggressive uh, rear diffuser down below and four parking sensors as well as the rear view camera. So uh, with that, I think that covers kind of the key um, changes and highlights to MDX. Like I said, if you haven't watched our other MDX A-Spec video for 2024, that goes into detail as well. So be sure to watch that. Next, let's go ahead and jump inside to talk about the interior. All right, guys, here we are inside the 2025 MDX Type S, and it is an awesome place to be. I mean, it was already a good place to be before the mid-cycle refresh, but I really think Acura made a lot of good enhancements, not only to the premium touch points, but to the features and of course the technology. So uh, it is a hot day. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and start it up. Um, we're gonna just uh, turn the AC down a little bit so you can uh, hear us here. Uh, but there's a lot to talk about guys. So let's, uh, let's go right after it. Um, now, here we are sitting inside. Um, let's start and talk about some of the enhancements that Acura has made. So uh, first and foremost, it's the premium touch point. So MDX already had, you know, premium Milano surfaces throughout, um, high contrast stitching on, on the top of the dash, uh, here on the steering wheel, um, even on the lower part of the dash, the center armrest, I mean, you name it. There was already lots of premium materials and touch points throughout. Um, but really one of the big changes uh, for 2025 is the seats. So they have an even more extensive, uh, what Acura calls curvilinear quilted design. So uh, that's a mouthful, but you can see these are some fancy looking seats. And not only are they great looking, but they're also super comfortable as well. Um, both the driver and the passenger get 16 way power seats with all kinds of adjustability. Um, there's three memory seatings for both the driver and the passenger. The seats are also not only three-way heated, ventilated, but massaged as well. That's right. There's actually nine-way massage functions, and we'll show you how that works in the screen, but it's super easy to activate, and boy, is it a lifesaver on like a long 
road trip uh, type of drive. So um, beyond that, also one of the kind of small details that I think was important is for 2025, Acura added in the Type S logo to both the driver and passenger front headrest. And I think that's a really, really nice touch point that the previous refresh Type S didn't have. Also, what's different is on this top trim, there's actually these Alcantara inserts here at the shoulders, on the side bolsters, and even down here on the lower section as well. So those weren't a part of the seat design. It, previously, it was all leather throughout. So um, not only do I think it helps to break up um, some of the design, uh, but it actually helps, again, to keep you in place given the position of that material. So really, really nice touch point as well. One of the other things is the steering wheel. Now this carries over um, from 2024. Um, so you still get all of your volume controls, your heated steering wheel here on the left, all of your safety and ADAS controls on your right. It's flat bottom, it says type S down here as well. Uh, perforations on the side. And again, it, it's just the perfect diameter, feels really good, um, has paddle shifters uh, and they feel really good as well. Um, Let's talk about the tech though. This is really where Acura made some big changes for 2025. So previously the MDX came standard with the 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. And that's still true for 2025. Um, but there are enhancements not only to the look and feel, but even the ADAS display now has a lot more information. It can show uh, a better um, image of what vehicles and things are around you. Um, that's a big enhancement since the previous model year. Um, also, they just kind of changed some of the, the, the graphics and images. So I guess my point is, is if you already have an MDX and you step in, you'll kind of look at it and go, oh yeah, that's different. You should notice it right away. But the big thing that cannot be ignored is that how Acura went from their true touchpad interface to this new touchscreen display. So previously it was a 12.3 inch screen, but it was set further back into the dash here um, purposely because they didn't want you trying to reach for it because it wasn't touchscreen. You also had this big palm rest down here as well as that true touchpad interface. All of that is gone for 2025 and now standard comes the same size, so it's 12.3 inches, but now finally it's a color touchscreen. And so what that means is they actually had to redesign the top of the dash to bring that screen forward to make it touchable. And you notice it right away. It's kind of like right in your face and, and for good. I mean, it looks really high res, um, really, really good graphics. I mean, that was true before, but you can tell that the interface has been updated as well. So now what you get is Google built in. So previously that wasn't offered. And so again, you've probably seen some of our other videos where we've talked about Google built in. Um, high level, it's three apps. It's the Google Maps, it's the Google Assistant, and it's the Google Play Store all built into the vehicle. So you don't need your smartphone to load up Google Maps. Um, you can download new apps over the air and you can tell the assistant to turn on like the ventilated seats, for example. So there's a lot of great functionality with Google built in. You also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wired and wireless. So also very nice functions. Um, and again, in changing the true touchpad interface for 2025, they essentially redesigned the center console area here. So this pocket, which was smaller before, grew in length. The touchpad is now gone. The volume button and track seat functions are right here. And where that palm rest used to be again that's completely gone now and you still have a wireless phone charger here which is nice so um, it's actually just exposed so uh, that is nice as you glance down it's much much easier to see your phone uh, without that palm rest but otherwise that those are kind of the big changes there for the center console you still get the two cup holders um, you still get a a medium size uh, center console. There are two USB-C ports inside, one for data, one for charging. Um, actually, just like previously, there's also two more uh, charging ports here. One is a C, one is an A. So you get lots of charging options, including the wireless charging pad. Um, one other little trick is there's a second button here under the center console. And if you load that, if you raise that up, there's actually another little cubby space there as well. You get hard buttons for the HVAC, um, auto um, climate controls, tri-zone. You also get auto seat controls. So again, for the heated 
uh, the ventilated function. And like I said, the massage function is really nice here. It's just a, it's just a push of a button to activate it and you push and hold to kind of bring up this menu on the screen. And from here, you can, ex you can actually select not only the intensity of the massage, but which massage you want. Now, before, again, you had to use the tr true touchpad interface. Now it's all touch, makes it really, really easy to use. So we'll show you that as well. But lastly, um, this is a huge change point for MDX. So um, now, just like ZDX, and if you've watched our ZDX Type S review, you'll know that Acura is using Bang & Olufsen for its premium audio systems. But boy, is the MDX system just another level, right? So some of the lower trims come with an available 19 speaker Bang & Olufsen system for 2025, really good sound system sounds great just like it does in the zdx type s um, those have like you know these kind of brushed aluminum uh grills uh the brushed aluminum tweeter design looks really good but for the type s advance acura went crazy there are 31 speakers now inside now if you remember ndx type s advance used to have 25 so there's six more speakers where they are is mind-boggling they're everywhere um but not only is it about the number of speakers, the wattage, you know, it's, it's the sound quality. The sound quality on this system is unrivaled. You have to go straight up to supercar level or, you know, ultra GT level to get anywhere close to this performance. And what's awesome is you can go into the menu, we'll show you what this is like, and you can adjust the sound using what they call Bayosonic. So that's Bang & Olufsen's kind of equalizer setup here. And it's super easy to adjust the sound quality, the 3D surround effect, and really give you this like amazing concert like hall sound. So um, that is really the, the, I mean, maybe worth buying MDX alone is literally just for that audio system. That's how good it is. So um, lastly, all MDX has come with an opening panoramic moonroof, no changes there. So with that, next, let's go ahead and hop in the second row seats. All right, guys, here we are in the second row of the MDX Type S. And it, just like the front row, it's a really, really nice place to be with a lot of premium materials and touch points throughout. So uh, as I look at the door, you do get the manual uh, sunshades, which is a nice feature, um, but you get this real wood that carries over from the front row back to the second row. Uh, we didn't talk about ambient lighting, but there's lots of it throughout the vehicle. Um, there's 27 different colors that you can choose from. Uh, it looks really, really awesome at night. But even here in the second row, you get more of those Bang & Olufsen speakers. Uh, and they're, like I said, they're just a really, really premium design. This kind of black ionized, you know, finish for the, uh, the grills up top um, and the, the speakers over your head. I mean, like I said, there's 31, so they're everywhere. Um, you still get the same uh, nice leather material, contrast stitching on the door linings. You get that same, you know, quilted design here, even in the second row, uh, which is really nice. The, the outboard seats are three setting heated seats, uh, which is nice. You do get full HVAC control back here. So it's tri-zone, which is really nice. You also get a 12 volt socket and two more USB-C charging ports as well. Uh, two map pockets, uh, which is really nice. And like I've shown you in the other um, previous MDX video, uh, this center seat here kind of plays dual hat. You can basically uh, lower it down, gives you a cubby space, um, has two cup holders here, and this second row seat can actually be removed. There's really not a lot of space to put it in the third row per se, unless you had the seats down, but this is something that if you really didn't need this uh, seven passenger capacity, and you only needed six uh, seats, you could remove this and store it in your garage or somewhere and store it, which is nice. But like I said, we showed this in the previous video, so we'll go ahead and leave it in this time. But with that, next, let's go ahead and check out the third row. All right, guys, here we are in the third row of the MDX Type S Advance. So, you know, again, admittedly, it is a little bit tighter back here in the third row, but it's pretty good space. I think if definitely if you're going to just do short trips or you're going to put your kids back here, it's definitely going to be fine. Uh, again, for reference, you know, I'm about 5'10 uh, for my height. Um, let me go ahead and just pull the seat back so you can see what that's like. So if I go ahead 
and now I kind of disappeared here for a second, but you can see this is the standard um, position for the second row seat. Uh, it does slide back and forth, um, so that's one thing, but um, this is with it all the way back. Now, honestly, if I kind of stretch out into the, you know, the middle here, I do have um, pretty good leg room. I probably got about an inch, inch and a half uh, between my knee and the back of this seat. Um, but what's nice is there is a little button here that's spring loaded that slides forward. You can even push it up a little bit more to get in and out of the vehicle really easily. Um, back here, there's also kind of small cup holders and you actually get two more USB charging ports, even in the third row. They're both A, not C, but there's one on each side. And again, a plethora of speakers, even back here in the third row. So uh, like I said, for short trips is probably fine. Or if you're going to throw the kids back here, that's good. Um, otherwise, you might want to look at uh, a much larger vehicle. So with that, next, let's go ahead and check out the cargo space. All right, guys, let's go ahead and talk about the cargo space of the MDX Type S. So with this being the MDX Type S Advance, it also gets the hands-free access system. So as long as you got the key fob on you, uh, there's actually a sensor down below. You kick underneath. And it opens right up. Obviously, that might be a pain for some, so you might just use the button or the grab handle to open it up. So here we are with the third row seats up. In this configuration, there's actually 16.3 cubic feet of space. If you push that down, it actually grows to 39.1 cubic feet of space. We'll put the numbers down there for you. So um, really competitive um, cargo capacity. Uh, what's nice, and we've shown this in the other MDX video, is this surface here is like a carpeted finish. Um, but not only does it lift up for more space down below, which is also carpeted, um, it's completely removable. And the opposite side is a plastic surface, which is nice uh, in case you have like wet boots or uh, you know, you're coming back from the beach. Also, what's nice is when you put it in, it actually can go down to a lower level, creating even more cargo space behind the third row. Also back here, you have a little hook for things, uh, a 12 volt uh, socket, and you have the button for what they call walk away, auto lock. Um, that's nice because if you have a bunch of stuff that you're holding, um, simply push that button. You can walk away from the vehicle. The power tailgate will lower down and close and the vehicle will lock itself for you. So uh, that's a very, very nice uh, feature and function to have. Lastly, I'll show you um, pushing down the third row seats is really easy. You got these grab handles here. Uh, so it's manual. It's not power, but you can see they fold down really, really easily. So uh, like I said, that gives you a lot of space. Uh, the second row uh, can also fold flat to give you a ton of space. I think at that point, you're now talking over, uh, I think it's like 71.4 cubic feet of space. So lots of space in the MDX. But next, let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain. All right, guys, here's the powertrain of the MDX Type S. Now, there were no changes to the hardware coming into this 2025 refresh, but if you're not familiar, let's go through the specs. So it uses Acura's three liter V6 single turbo engine. It makes 355 horsepower and 354 foot pounds of torque. Now it's mated to Acura's 10 speed automatic transmission and it only comes with SH all wheel drive. So Acura's torque vectoring, super handling all wheel drive system. Now, if you've never driven this uh, engine, uh, either in something like the TLX Type S or the MDX Type S before, it's a pretty potent engine. Now, like I said, it's a single turbo, but it's a twin scroll, which helps it spool up really quickly and give you lots of low end and mid range torque. But there's no better way to prove that out than to get behind the wheel. So next, let's take this thing for a drive. All right, guys, here we are inside the MDX Type S, and we're going to go ahead and take this thing for a drive. So first, uh, grab my seatbelt, throw that on, put on the brake, engine start stop button, get some nice animation graphics, which is really cool. Uh, one of the nice things about MDX's standard is a 
power uh, tilt uh, steering wheel, so it kind of comes out with you with your seat memory, seat moves forward, you get comfortable quick. So um, let's go ahead and take this thing for a drive. Um, we'll talk about, of course, all the drive modes and things like that as we uh, make our way through, um, but it does use Acura's uh, push button style gear selector. So just uh, foot on the brake and hit D to, uh, to set off. So um, like I said, we're gonna talk about the different drive modes um, that are in the car. We're gonna show you what they look like on screen and talk about the changes. So there's several um, different modes. So we're not gonna use all of them today. So one is called lift mode. Um, that's kind of neat because basically what it does is it um, you know actually changes the ride height so if you really needed the vehicle to you know ride high to get out of uh, you know snow uh, sand you know things like that you know it, it's nice because it can lift the vehicle up um, also you have a dedicated snow mode which is going to adjust things like your traction control throttle response things like that um, but we're going to set off in kind of um, some of the more day-to-day -day driving modes so the first one we'll start off in is uh, comfort mode and so what that does is it gives you some uh, blue graphics shows you some icons and uh, this is kind of like you're just tooling around dr uh, driving around the city mode um, what's really nice is man the suspension is super supple um, so this car has the not only the adaptive um, dampers but the full air suspension and uh, when MDX Type S launched this was uh, both Honda and Acura's first implementation of air suspension and they nailed it I mean the, the ride quality on this car is amazing like especially if you drive this car on a very very long road trip it just melts the miles away you know you don't even you don't even notice whether it's good surface or bad surface that's how good the air suspension tuning is on the MDX Type S so um, that's one of the first things you notice about comfort mode uh, the next thing is that you'll notice is the steering is is pretty light um, it's not overly light but again it's kind of meant to be easily getting around parking lots tight parking spaces things like that um, but as we set out here you know doing 45 miles cruise uh, one of the other things you'll notice about MDX in general is it has really good MVH uh, very very quiet um, very very little uh, wind noise engine noise in, in the comfort mode uh, and, and really I mean it's just a little bit of tire noise that's all you're getting so very very quiet um, cabin very very premium touch points throughout um, in the comfort mode you'll also notice that um, I mean you can still tell us a type s if you dip into it a little bit you know you get that surge from the uh the turbocharger uh kicking in but otherwise uh it's kind of dialed back um like i said it's very deceiving uh given how quiet the vehicle is you can be up to speed really quickly so you kind of got to watch out for that um but for the most part like this is a really really good driving mode and you know if you were to combine this with like your massage seats you know that that would be a really really awesome daily commute so what next we'll go to the normal driving mode this is kind of the default setting for MDX. And so uh, instantly what happens is steering gets a little bit heavier. Um, I feel like the overall tuning uh, for the steering was actually changed going into this mid-cycle refresh. I think it might have been a little too light pre-2025, but now it feels very, very well tuned. Um, in the normal, it's the perfect balance of sport and comfort. It's not overly heavy, but you, you definitely have uh, confidence going into turns. I'm actually going in some pretty big bends here in normal mode, and the car just you know feels like it's on rails. So really, really good tuning there. Um, you also notice suspension gets a little bit firmer, but not overly harsh, and the throttle response um, picks up as well. So coming into traffic here a little bit, um, next we'll change it over to sport mode so changing it into sport mode gives you uh, updated you know graphics in the meter and instantly what you notice is the suspension gets even one level firmer so again it's not overly harsh but there is a dramatic difference between the drive mode so again I gotta give kudos to the engineers for that tuning because it's sometimes you know when you're cycling through the modes you're like did it change what changed in this car you know exactly what changed I mean the, the suspension is much firmer the steering got even heavier uh, and the throttle response and even the engine note finally kind of kicked in going into sport mode so um 
It, it feels really, really good. This is something that I think you could drive every day and still really enjoy it. I know sometimes the sport modes are like overly harsh. Uh, the settings are overly harsh for the suspension and the steering. And sometimes it's kind of a nuisance. You don't almost want to drive in it. But here, the tuning is really, really good for sport mode. But with this being a Type S, there's one more mode, which is exclusive, called Sport Plus. Now, what you do is you take the dynamic mode dial here, and you turn it to the right, and you hold it. And now, it's in Sport Plus. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to lower the vehicle down. It might take a second. You'll actually see an icon show up in the digital instrument cluster to let you know that it's lowering itself down. But that's to give you the best dynamic performance possible. The other thing you'll notice is, man, the engine sound. And there it is, the engine performance uh, is definitely there. And I'm going uphill on there, so we're well over 60. I mean, I'm blasting up a pretty big incline here, and there is no problem in the MDX Type S. It has really, really good performance. Uh, like I said, that's that twin scroll turbocharger, gives you awesome low end and mid range torque, so uh, it really, really gets up. Now, like a lot of other Acuras here on the gear selector, the D also has a slash S. So if you push that in, Instantly it kind of like kicked it up one more gear and what that'll do is it'll help to hold the uh, the gears as you're using the paddle shifters now Admittedly and you've seen this in some of our other drive reviews It won't necessarily just let you bang off the rev limiter. It's trying to protect the transmission and the engine, but um, For most cases it will leave it in gear for you. So let's go ahead and like do a blast here I'm gonna switch down. This is M3. This is M2. So now I'm in basically second gear I'm gonna go ahead and give it a blast. Ready? Here we go and so really quickly, I mean, I'm going up a pretty big incline there, and there's 60 plus. So I mean, um, MDX is not uh, slow at all. And even more than it's just like overall acceleration, it's the handling. I mean, I'm taking this band <laughs> with, at, and still going that speed, and it is no problem in this three-row SUV. Um, and you also combine that with the Brembo brakes, which I'm using right now to stop, and they stop on a dime. It's almost funny because you would never think that a big three-row SUV should not only handle like this, but brake like this. I mean, it's and it's a drastic difference, right? Like than what you get versus the non-Type S without the Brembo brakes. It that not that only uses um, a different what they call um, eye booster style brake system. This uses the electro servant braking system used in the NSX, so it's instantly no. And again, there's the performance, and then there's 60, right? So, I mean, MDX Type S rips, guys. It's it's a lot of fun to drive. Combine that with, like I said, the handling. Um, knowing you've got the extra braking performance is also confidence-inspiring. And again, this just makes this three-row SUV a ton of fun to drive. Um, like I said, the Delta in performance from the standard 3.5 liter V6 really is just that mid-range torque. You don't get nearly as much shove in the standard engine as you do here in the Type S powertrain. But like I said, it's kind of the, the entire experience, right? Like, cause when you're in Sport Plus, the vehicle is lowered down, it's hunkered down, it feels like it's a, it's trying to be a sports car. So here we go, get another quick blast, there was 60, so. Yeah, and it shifts the gears automatically, even in the S and 60 problem so uh, MDX Type S is a great performer now the one thing I will say is fuel economy comes as a penalty for the extra performance so um, I think they say the combined is like only 19 mpg so we'll put the stats down below for you to see so this is definitely not about getting the best fuel economy uh, that's for sure but uh, you, you pay to play right and when you do pay you get an awesome, awesome driving experience. But the last thing I'll say is, it's not just the performance of the MDX Type S, it's all those amazing features that we talked about in the interior. So, you know, combine these great driving dynamics with that 31 speaker Bang & Olsen audio system. Combine it with the heated and ventilated seats with the nine-way massage function. Now you've got an easy to use touchscreen, you know, right and easy reach. Um, it really is a sublime driving experience. I mean, you gotta check it out for yourself. So let us know down in the comments below, are you okay with the standard MDX? Are you jumping all the way to Type S? And do you love the enhancements that Acura made for this mid-cycle refresh? So with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up this drive video. All right guys, that's a wrap. What did you think of the 2025 Acura MDX Type S? Did Acura make all the right changes and improvements at this mid-cycle refresh? Is it one of the best three-row luxury SUVs in the segment? Let us know your guys' thoughts and comments down below. 
If you joined us before, thank you very much. But if you're new to the channel, please be sure to click that bell to subscribe to come back for more. Thanks, and we'll see you at the next episode. Yeah,